Hello and welcome adventurers. I'm Mary, and in this video I'll be going over the history of Eorzea's main antagonist, Garlemald. This is part one of a two-part series, covering the origins of Garlemald and the reign of Solus Zosgalbus. I don't want this intro to be too invasive, so let's get started. of the Garlean Empire we know today started in the southern regions of Ilsebard. The Garlean people are unable to manipulate ether, putting them at a strong disadvantage against those who can wield magic. This power imbalance led to territorial disputes, and the Garleans were expelled from their lands and forced to settle in the bleak northern region. This land suffered harsh, long winters, leaving only a short window during the year for farming and animal raising. The land, however, was rich in ceruleum, a blue liquid that burned like oil, which allowed them to survive in the extreme cold. In 922, the Republic of Garlemald was founded to unite its people in order to fend off aggression from surrounding territories. They prevailed, due in large part to hiring rogue and mages from the Central Mountains, and using spycraft to incite conflict amongst their neighbors. In 1513, a 24-year-old Solus Galvis attained the rank of Legatus within the Garlean military. Well, well, we have a historian in our midst. That spares me a lengthy explanation. I am Solus Sos Galvis, founding father of the Garlean Empire, and under various guises, the architect of myriad other imperially inclined nations. As for my true identity... I am Emmet Selk, Asian. We now know that the Asian Emmet Selk possessed his body and assumed his identity, but it is unclear when in Solus's history this took place. Solus saw great potential in the newly invented Cerulean engine. He was instrumental in the development of Magitek weapons, and conceived the tactics for their use in the army. While initially met with skepticism, Magitek technology soon proved its worth in battle with victory after victory. Bolstered by this, Garlomald began invading the countries of northern Ilsebard and annexed their lands. To expand their army, Garlomald recruited from the newly subjugated peoples, promising to make their lives better with Magitek technology in exchange for military service. In 1517, Solus was made dictator by overwhelming support. And by 1522, Solus had united the entire continent by force. He proclaimed himself emperor, and the Garlean Empire was born. Solus began his march on Othard in 1528. Imperial history states that during this campaign, Solus saw a land ravaged by primals and devoid of life. 
This led the emperor to issue an imperial mandate for the annihilation of icons, refusing to believe in a divine origin. This notion is geographically impossible due to the burn being located to the west of Othard. Garlemald's march west did not begin until after the fall of Doma in 1552. Emmet Selk, however, would have had knowledge of the burn and the dam cutting off the land's aether due to his involvement in Alag. After Garlemald captured Alamigo in 1557, Solus set his sights on Eorzea. It was here where Garlemald's western invasion met with failure. In 1562, the Battle of Silvertier Skies ended in a devastating loss when the Imperial flagship, the Agrius, was taken down by the Great Worm Midgard Zomer. It was during this time that Project Meteor was first conceived. Midas Nangarlin attempted communication with the lesser moon Dalamud using elegant artifacts at the Imperial stronghold of Bosja Citadel. Nangarland had uncovered the Alligan's method of overcoming primals, and that Dalamud was an Alligan creation. He surmised that Dalamud held a great source of energy and could be used as a weapon of mass destruction if pulled from the skies and unleashed on Eorzea. Solus greenlit the project, and Nangarland made contact with Dalamud. The immensity of the satellite's power was confirmed, but the energy was directed to the Citadel's transmission tower, causing the tower and the city to vanish. Imperial sensors tried to hide the event, but the vanishing of a major city proved too big to suppress. It became known as the Bosja Incident. Project Meteor was suspended, and Garlemald and Eorzea entered into a stalemate. Solus set his sights again on Icon Annihilation after solidifying occupied territories in Othard in 1572. Nail Van Darnus proposed ridding Eorzea of Icons using House Darnus' knowledge of Alligan relics. Solus deployed Van Darnus to Eorzea, and Van Darnus used this opportunity to convince Solus to resurrect Project Meteor, claiming he had a means to control Dalamud. The second phase of the Meteor Project commenced. Despite repeated attempts to thwart its progress, Project Meteor successfully set the Lesser Moon onto a collision course with Eorzea. Dalamud shattered over the plains of Cartano, freeing the Elder Primal Bahamut and causing the Seventh Umbral Calamity. Gaius Van Belsar, Legatus of the 14th Legion, took advantage of the upheaval to set up several Imperial outposts across Eorzea in preparation for future conquests. <music> Emmet Selk made the decision to let the body of Solus Zosgalvis die five years after the seventh Umbral Calamity. News of the Emperor's failing health caused strife within Garlemald, since Solus had named no heir. This led to the abandonment of a unified invasion of Eorzea, leaving Van Belsar and his legion on their own to achieve their goal. Van Belsar was entrusted with the newly found Ultima weapon, using this ancient Alligan relic to absorb the primals Ifri, Titan, and Garuda. He meant to use the weapon to intimidate the city-states of Eorzea. However, the reinstated Eorzean alliance rejected this ultimatum and launched a counterattack. Van Belsar and the Ultima weapon were defeated by the Warrior of Light at the Praetorium. Another blow for the Garlean Empire.
Soon after the arrival of the seventh astral era, Emmett Selk discards Solus Sos Galvis by succumbing to an illness at the age of 88. Civil war breaks out in Garlemald over his succession, with Solus's son and grandson vying for the throne. Varus Zos Galvis emerges victorious, succeeding his beloved grandfather as the second emperor of Garlemald. What are your thoughts on Garlemald's history? Is there something I left out that you'd like to see me cover in another video? Let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. I also stream on Twitch, link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time adventurers, remember, you matter, and may you ever walk in the light of the crystal.